Hello and welcome to another DJF computer tutorial. <laughs> okay, in this tutorial I'm going to try to go over everything that you need to know about installing Windows. Um, Windows XP, Windows Vista, and 7. Uh, this first part is going to be mostly about Windows XP. Although I'm still going to give some information about uh, Windows 7 and Vista as well. Um, in my next video it's going to be mostly about uh, installing Windows 7. Okay, I'm going to try to make this as thorough as possible, uh, but I might forget a few things. If I do, uh, just make sure your annotations are on, and that way you can read some of the message that I might have on here, uh, so that you can read some of the things I might have forgotten to mention. But I'll try to make this as thorough as, as possible. Okay, the first thing you want to ask yourself is why are you reinstalling Windows or installing Windows onto your computer? Uh, there might be a few reasons why, you know. Uh, you might have replaced your hard drive and you need to install a fresh copy of Windows. Or you need to reinstall Windows on here because you've got a really bad virus. Whatever the reasons why you uh, installing Windows onto your computer, uh, the first thing that you need to do is to back up all your drivers. And also back up like your pictures, your documents, your music, and stuff like that if you want to back them up. Now to back up your drivers, I have a tutorial on that already. Uh, it's on my old channel. Uh, I'll put the link in the description for that. Uh, but I'll change the link once I redo it and update that tutorial. But for now, just go ahead and go to my old video in my old channel. Okay, now that you've backed up the drivers and anything else that you want to save on your computer, now it's time you can go ahead and reinstall Windows. But first, before I go through the process of telling you how to install Windows, I want to give you a, a little bit of information first. Okay, most computers today, mostly like Vista and Windows 7, has a uh, factory recovery program on there. And what this means, it will back the computer all the way back up to where it came from the factory. Uh, so this means they'll reinstall Windows and all the application that originally came with the computer when it was first bought. Now, as you can see, that this is HP's recovery manager. Now, each manufacturer, whether it's Dell, Acer, and uh, Toshiba, and stuff like that, their recovery manager are a little, is a little bit different. Uh, and they might be named a little bit different, too. Okay, now here is the Acer recovery management software. I should say they look a little bit different and stuff like that. And also, in order to get to, get to the program, uh, it's a little different too. The only thing you, you need to do is go to the manufacturer's website, and they pretty much should tell you how to get to this program. And oh, by the way, XP, there are very few of them out there that would do this, but some of them also has a system recovery program in them as well. Okay, now that I got all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the step-by-step -step tutorial. The first thing you want to do, depending on what brand computer you have, uh, whether you have a Dell or a HP or Acer or whatever kind of computer you have, you will need to go into the BIOS and change the boot sequence. Uh, or if you have a boot menu, you can go into that as well. Now, depending on which computer you have, there are a few ways of doing this. What you would do, you would restart your computer, and whenever the manufacturer's logo come up, like uh, in this case, this is Dell, uh, what you do is you let it start loading until you see what function key that you need to hit to get into the BIOS. Now, if the loading screen goes a little too fast for you, what you can do when you first see the F function keys on there, what you could do is hit pause break on your keyboard here and it will freeze that right there so that you can see which function key that you need to hit to get into the BIOS. And sometimes they might not be function keys, it might be something simple as escape or something like that. Now in this example right here, you can see that there's an F function up here that I can press to get into the big menu. Now it's your choice of whether you want to go into CMOS and change the boot order or you just want to go into the boot menu. Not all CMOSs look the same, as you can see here. Uh, they're all a little bit different. Uh, I'm just showing you the three examples right now. Uh, but there's a few more out there. Now, don't get scared. Even though uh, yours might look different or something like that, it's pretty much easy to do. All you have to do is look for something that says boot or uh, advance or uh, boot sequence, something about booting. Okay, and that's all you have to do. Find that and then just change the boot order. Like in this case right here, as you can see, is uh, like you got hard drive and then CD-ROM. What you want to do, you want to change the boot order to boot off the CD-ROM before the hard drive. And down here at the bottom, you'll see some directions on how to do that. Then once you do that, just make sure that you exit and then save or exit and save. Like in this uh, case right here, F10 is to save and exit. 
Okay, let's say that you decided to do it the easy way and go through the boot menu. That is, if your computer actually has a boot menu that you can go into. From here, it's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is just pick your CD-ROM drive. Okay, from here on out, I'm going to be reading step-by-step -step instructions that I went ahead and wrote down just so I won't forget anything. So, uh, here we go. Now, this procedure demonstrates how to install Windows XP Professional. The procedure to install Windows XP Home Edition is very similar to the Professional Edition. Since Windows XP Pro is more advanced operating system, uh, it will be used to uh, dem demonstrate the installation procedure here. Okay, assuming that you've already done that and you have your disk in your CD-ROM drive, it's going to ask you to press any key to continue. You go ahead and press any key and then it's going to scan your system here. At this stage, it will ask you to press F6 if you want to install a third party RAID or a SCSI driver. If you are using an IDE hard drive, then you do not need to press F6. If you are using a SCSI or a SATA hard drive, then you must press F6, otherwise Windows will not detect your hard drive during the installation. Please make sure that you have the RAID drivers on the floppy disk. Normally, the drivers are supplied on CD, which uh, you can copy to the floppy disk ready to be installed. If you are not sure how to do this, then read your motherboard's manuals for more information. But for the most part, mostly you probably will not have to do this. Now, if you have to do this, this is what you do. You will press S to specify that you want to install an additional device. Next, uh, you will be asked to insert a floppy disk with the RAID or SCSI drivers that press enter after you have inserted that disk. Next, you will see a list of RAID drivers for your hard drive. Select the correct driver for your device and then press enter. Okay, next, uh, if you didn't have to install these drivers or you did have to install these drivers, this will be the next screen that comes up. Okay, you will then get a Windows XP Professional Setup screen. You will have the option to do a new Windows install, repair previous install, or quit. Since we are doing a new install, we will just press enter to continue. Okay, next you will be presented with a end user licensing agreement. Just press F8 to accept and continue. Now, for those of you that might have an illegal copy of Windows XP, you probably won't get this option on there. Okay, next, this step is very important. Here we will be creating the partition where Windows will be installed. If you have a brand new unformatted drive, then you will be getting a screen similar to the one I have here. In my case, uh, the drive size is um, 8,190 megabytes. We can choose to install Windows in this drive without creating a partition, hence the use of the entire size of the drive. Okay, if you wish to do this, you can just press Enter and Windows will automatically partition and format the drive as one large drive. However, for this demonstration, I will create a two partition. The first partition will be a 6000 megabyte, which will be the C drive, and the second partition will be a 2180 megabyte, uh, which will be the E drive. Uh, by creating the two partitions, we can have one which stores Windows and applications, and the other one which stores our data. So in the future, if anyone, anything goes wrong with our Windows install, such as the virus or spyware, we can reinstall Windows on C drive and our data on E drive will not be touched. Now please note, you can choose whatever size partition you like. For example, if you have a 500 gigabyte hard drive, then you can have two partitions of like 250 gigabyte each, or you know whatever, whatever size you want to have it. Now if you want to do this, press C to create a partition. Now Windows will show you the total size of your hard drive and ask you how much you want to allocate for the partition you are about to create. I will choose 6000 megabytes. Of course, now you can put whatever size you want to put on, depending on what size hard drive you have. Okay, after you have done that, you would now see a screen like this. Notice that it shows C partition 1 followed by the size 6000 megabytes. This indicates that the partition has been created. We will still have an unpartitioned space of 2189 megabytes. Okay, next highlight the unpartitioned space by pressing down the arrow key. Then press C to create another partition. 
you will see the total space available for the new partition. Just choose all the space left over. In my case, uh, it is 2,180 megabytes. Okay, now you will see both partitions listed. Partition 1, which is the C drive, uh, it is 6,000 megabytes. And partition 2, which is the E drive, it is 2,180 megabytes. You will also have a 8 megabyte of um, partition space. Now, don't worry about that. Just leave it how it is. Windows normally has some uh, um, partition space. Uh, you might wonder what happened to the D drive. <laughs> Well, Windows has automatically allocated the D drive to the CD slash DVD ROM drive. Now from here, all you have to do is just press enter on the C drive. And oh yeah, by the way, uh, if you have like an external hard drive or a thumb drive in your computer, uh, it would also show up in this area. So the best thing to do is not to have a thumb drive or a hard drive hooked up to your computer while you are installing Windows. That way you won't accidentally mess them up. Okay, next choose to format partition using NTFS file system. This is the recommended file system. If the hard drive has been formatted before, then you can choose the quick NTFS format. Now the reason why we choose NTFS is because it offers many security features, supports uh, larger drive size and bigger uh, size files. Okay, now Windows will start formatting the C drive. And then when it's done formatting the C drive, Windows will start copying setup files and then restart your computer. Okay, when the computer restarts, do not, I repeat, do not uh, take out the XP CD and also do not press any key when the message press any key to boot from CD is display. In a few seconds the setup will continue. Windows XP setup wizard will guide you through the setup process of gathering information about your computer. Okay after a while choose your region and language will come up. Next type in your name and organization if you have an organization. If not just leave it blank. Next, you will need to enter in your product key. Now, sometimes you can find the product key on the side of the computer, um, or if you bought a brand new one, it should be on a box somewhere somewhere in your package. Now, if you are installing a legal version of Windows, then you might not be asked to enter in a product key. That's for illegal versions. Next, you're going to name your computer and enter in an administrative password. Uh, if you don't want an administrative password, you don't uh, have to have one. Uh, but if you do have one, you might want to write, uh, write your password down somewhere. Next, you want to enter in the correct date, time, and choose your time zone. Next, for network settings, choose typical and press next. Next, choose a work group or domain name. If you're not a member of a domain, then uh, leave the default settings and press next. Windows will restart again and adjust the display. Finally, Windows will start and present you with a welcome screen. Click next to continue. Next, you want to choose help protect my PC by turning on automatic updates now and press next. Now, if you have an illegal version of Windows, then you want to go ahead and choose not right now. Next, will this computer be connected to the internet directly through a network? Uh, if you are connected to a router or LAN, in other words, basically cable or DSL, uh, then click yes. Uh, if it's connected through a dial-up modem, then click no. Next, you need to activate Windows. I suggest you do it now. But if you decide to wait till later, you have 30 days to do it. If you don't do it within 30 days, then Windows will stop working. Next, add users that will sign on to the computer and then click Next. Next, you will get a thank you screen to confirm the setup is complete and then click Finish. And from there, you are finished. You have Windows XP. From there, the only thing that you need to do is install some drivers or update your drivers, install some programs, antivirus, uh, any of your backup data. And there you go. Uh, that is how you install Windows XP. My next tutorial is going to be how do you install Windows 7. Um, I'm not going to do one on Vista because Windows 7 and Vista is very similar and they pretty much look the same. Also, you want to go ahead and do all your uh, automatic updates on, on Windows XP as well. Now, for your illegal users, you don't want to do automatic updates. You want to go ahead and turn them off. If you don't know how to do it, just look up a tutorial on it and it will show you how to do it. I'll try to remember to do one. Sorry this has been a long one, but I had a lot of information to give you. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. Comment, rate, subscribe. Thank you, and have a nice day.